Over the last week or so, I have made some really exciting updates to the local GPT project, including support for the new GGUF format model and a much better prompt template to restrict answers to the given documents. So I'm really excited uh, to share these updates as well as show you some tips and tricks when it comes to using local GPT. If you're not familiar with local GPT, it's my project that lets you chat with your documents using the power of open source large language models. Everything is on device and 100% secure. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the updates that I have been working on over the last few weeks. As you can see, the whole documentation is rewritten from scratch. I'll also address some of the issues that people are having when using local GPT. Okay, so let's start with installation. Here I'm going to show you how to enable GPU support when it comes to Llama CPP. Now, in order to set it up, you first need to clone the repo, then create a Conda virtual environment, activate the corresponding virtual environment, and then you can install all the dependencies except Llama CPP using pip install dash r requirements.txt. So this will install everything that you need except Llama CPP. Llama CPP is the main package that we're using to load GGML and the new GGUF format models. It has support for both CPU and GPU, but in order to enable GPU support, you need to install it in a specific way. So let me first show you how to install this on a MacBook with M2 chip, and then I'll show you how to do the same if you have an NVIDIA GPU. If you have Apple Silicon, you simply need to copy uh, this line simply copy it. Here I am in my VS code. So I have already activated a new virtual environment called local GPT. And I simply need to paste it here, that command. So it basically set this environment variable. And if I hit enter, it will install uh, the Llama CPP. Okay, another thing that you probably will notice is that I'm using a specific version of Llama CPP. This is not the latest version. But within this version, they added support for GGUF model format. But unfortunately, Llama CPP has dropped support for GGML format. So if you have a GGML format model and you want to run those, you will need to install Llama CPP version 0.1.76 or earlier. Now for my testing, I'm using the version 0.1.83 because with the latest version, I wasn't able to enable hardware acceleration. So that might be my specific issue, but I usually like to stick to um, relatively older versions because those are more stable. If you are running this on a Linux machine, you can simply uh, copy this line if you have an NVIDIA GPU. Assuming that you are running this on Linux, you can simply paste this command uh, so in this case, basically, we are using the CUDA bus that is set to on and then the rest of the uh, installation instruction. In most of the cases, this should work. However, you might run into an issue. So in that case, you probably want to uh, set the environment variable manually. And the way that you do it in Linux is, uh, so let's say you want to uh, simply set this uh, CMake arguments. So you can simply type in export and then set the environment variable. Uh, you will need to do the same thing for uh, the second environment variable as well. And then you can run the pip install command uh, to install Llama CPP. Now let's assume that you want to uh, install Llama CPP on Windows. Then in order to set the environment variable, uh, the command is a bit different. Now in that case, instead of export, we're going to use a command called set x and that will set the environment variable for us. So you will again need to set both environment variables uh, so that force make equal to one, that's going to be also set. And after that, you will simply use the pip install llama cpp. You can uh, provide the version number if you want, otherwise it's going to install the latest version and then you can uh, set this extra parameter, no cache directory. So this is how you install Llama CPP with GPU support on different platforms. Okay, now before looking at some of the changes that I have implemented, 
let's look at one of the questions that I see a lot being asked both on GitHub as well as on the Discord server. And the question is related to the hardware requirements in order to run local GPT. So one of the community member on the Discord server created this table based on uh, their experimentation and it's extremely helpful in order to figure out what type of hardware you would need in order to run uh, different models. Now in local GPT, there are two components. One is the LLM and the second is the embedding model. Now in terms of the LLM, if you're looking at uh, running a 7 billion parameter model with a 4-bit quantized version, then you are looking at around 4 to 5 gigabytes of VRAM. And we are specifically talking about the GPTQ format. Now, since we're using the instructor embeddings for the information retrieval part, you will also need somewhere from two to seven gigabytes of VRAM, depending on what type of instructor embedding you use. Now, by default, the embedding model that we're using is around four gigabytes. So let's say if you want to run a seven billion parameter model, you are looking at around eight to nine gigabytes of VRAM. So this table is part of the GitHub repo and I would recommend everyone to actually look at it before deciding what type of model to run. I will also recommend everyone to check out the Discord server because you're going to find very helpful information when it comes to large language models. Now let's look at some of the features that we have added as well as some of the code changes. One of the main features that we have added is the support for GGUF format models because that's the model format which is supported by Llama CPP out of the box now. That means now you will be able to run almost all the models available on Hugging Face except Falcon and MPT based model. Support for those models is coming soon. Okay, so now let's look at some of the code changes that uh, we have made. So if you look at all the files in the repo, you will see a couple of new files. For example, there is a load models file and then there is a prompt template utils file. We're going to look at those in a little bit. Okay, in order to ingest a file, use the same old command that is python ingest.py and then if you uh, don't have an NVIDIA GPU, then you can pass on another parameter which is device type. And here, since I'm running this on an M2, I will pass on the MPS. Uh, if you want to run this on CPU, you can simply pass CPU. Now, in this case, I'm actually using the original ORCA paper for ingestion. So it simply splits it into different chunks. So there are a total of 195 chunks and it will create a vector store. So here, when I run it for the first time, you will see that it will create this new folder called DB. So this was the original functionality for ingestion of documents. Now, in order to ask questions from your documents, we're going to uh, run the main uh, local GPT file. Again, you can pass on the device type. So in this case, I'm going to pass MPS. However, you can also pass a couple of other parameters as well. For example, if you want to show sources, so you can type in show sources, that will basically uh, show you all the different chunks that were retrieved during the information retrieval process. And you can also set this extra flag uh, called use history. So this will basically uh, enable to use the chat history in your retrieval process. Now this behavior is uh, disabled by default because we have very limited context window when it comes to these open source large language models. So you will have to enable it using this specific flag. Okay, when I run this, you will actually notice a few things. So first and foremost, uh, display of source documents is set to true. So when we ask a question, it's going to also show us the corresponding chunks. History is also set to true. So basically we can use a chat history as a part of our conversation. Now, in this case, you will notice that it is using this Llama 27B chat GGUF model. So this is the latest model version that uh, Llama CPP supports. Okay, and um, as before, you are presented with this prompt, enter a query, and you can ask a question here. Now, to check whether uh, Llama CPP is actually using your GPU or not, you need to pay close attention to this parameter. So if BLAST is set to one, that means it's using the GPU. 
if it sets to zero, it means that it's not using your GPU. Now, the document that I'm interacting with is this paper, Arca Progressive Learning from Complex Explanation Traces of GPT-4. So let's ask uh, some questions relevant to this paper. So my question is going to be, what are the different types of prompts discussed in this paper? And let's see what the answer is. Okay, uh, so if you look at the performance, it actually is able to get pretty good uh, tokens per second uh, on my M2 with 96 gigabytes of RAM. But let's look at the answer. So uh, the, the question was, what are different types of prompts discussed in the paper? And it says, based on the provided context, there are several types of prompts discussed in the paper. So it's talking about wizard LM prompts, then awesome chat GPT prompts, then reprompting, and also I think it's discussing um, scaling instruction fine-tuned language models. Okay, so this is the answer that the LLM generated. Now, the quality of the output from the LLM is really dependent on the sources or chunks that you get. And the chunks depends on how you split your documents. So if you want to learn more about uh, the splitting process, I have a dedicated video on the topic. I'll put a link to that video. Now, when you build chatbots based on your documents, you want the answer to be restricted to the information provided in those documents. And that is one of a big issue uh, that I have seen people face. So let's see if local GPT can actually restrict uh, the answers to the document that we provided. So let's ask a completely irrelevant question. So I'm going to uh, say who is the CEO of Twitter and let's see if the model is going to give us an answer. Okay, uh, so here's the question again, who is the CEO of Twitter? And here's the answer that we got. So based on the provided context, the CEO of Twitter is not mentioned, therefore it cannot provide an answer to this question. Now, as you can see, the answers are actually restricted to the context that you have provided. Now, keep in mind that we are using just a 7 billion uh, parameter model. So the model can still hallucinate. Now, the question is going to be how we were able to restrict the answers. So that comes down to the system prompt that we are providing to local GPT. Now, in order to understand that, we need to look at this new file prompt template utils.py. So let me open this up. Okay, so here is the system prompt that I'm using. So I have experimented with quite a few different system prompts for Llama 2 based models. Uh, and this one seems to work pretty, pretty good when it comes to information retrieval from your documents. So now there is a dedicated function for this. So if the uh, prompt template type is Llama, it will adopt the Llama 2 uh, prompt template. If it's uh, anything other than Llama, then it will simply uh, define a prompt template where it will use the system prompt, then the provided history and context if the history is enabled and the corresponding question. Uh, but in case of Llama 2, so it will basically format the same thing in this a specific prompt template. Now, where exactly is that being used? So for that, we need to go to the run local gpt.py file. Now you will notice that the code is much cleaner now. So there is this main function retrieval QA pipeline. If you go here, uh, so in here, we are calling uh, that function get prompt template. Then we're passing on the uh, prompt template type. So in the, uh, by default, it's set to Llama and then whether we want to use history or not. So basically this, um, the function gives you the ability to define your own uh, prompt templates based on the model that you're using. So if there is interest, uh, I'll make another video where I will go through this uh, updated code base. Another question that I have seen a lot during the discussions is where are these LLMs stored after downloading? So now you will be able to actually define a custom path. So if you look at this code segment within the run local GPT file, I'm simply creating a, a new folder if it doesn't exist. And the path is coming from models path variable. So for that, we need to go and look at the constant.py. So here you will see that I'm defining a path variable. Now, if I go here, you will see that uh, it has a new folder called models. 
and this will basically uh, keep track of all the models that you're downloading in a single place so essentially you simply need to define your path in here and uh, models are going to be downloaded to that specific directory now currently this works with the uh, hugging face model types ggml gguf uh, but i'm also looking at adding the support for the gptq models now let's talk about a couple of more important parameters that are moved to constant.py now so first is the context window so based on the model that you have selected you need to define your context window in here and then uh, you can also define the max new tokens that are being generated so by default i have set this to context window size however you probably want to use a fraction of the context window so i might actually change this to one fourth or uh, half of the context window but this is going to be basically the center place where you can define your context window now another thing that you want to define is the number of layers that you want to offload to gpu uh, so you can define those in here and now uh, the llama 270 build model has a total of 73 layers that you can offload so i have set this to 100 so depending on your hardware that will basically determine how many layers it can uh, offload now when it comes to embedding models uh, so here you have a number of options so by default it's using the constructor large model and it's actually using around 1.5 gigabytes of vram uh, and then there are some other options that you can use and here are the details with the corresponding vram requirements now if you need multilingual embedding models uh, so we have also provided a few examples in here you can explore one of these as well now in terms of the uh, llms you will need to provide both the model id as well as model base name uh, if you're using the unquantized model for example the hugging face models then in that case you will set the base name to none but by default we are going to be using the uh, llama 2 7 billion uh, chat model in the gguf format uh, and that's going to be the 4-bit quantized version and within the constants.py uh, file we have the same table which simply lists down uh, the vram requirements for different models and different quantization level so if you go to the load models file there are three functions one is the load quantized model gguf and gg gguml the second one is uh, load quantized model gptq and the last one is load full models right so basically i have uh, removed all the functionality from the main run local gpt file and put it in here uh, to make it more modular and easier to understand another change in the code is that now the retrieval qa pipeline is moved to its own function so you simply need to provide the type of device that you are running this on it can be a cuda uh, nvidia gpu cpu or mps whether you want to use chat history or not and then whether you want to use the default prompt template uh, that comes with llama uh, llama 2 models or not right um, and that will call uh, both the embedding models the uh, vector store that you have created uh, it will get the corresponding prompt template as well as the memory it will load the model and then it will simply run everything through the query tool chain and you will get a response so in this video we looked at different features that are uh, newly added to the local gpt project if you want uh, a more detailed code walkthrough let me know in the comment section below and i'll create another video and if you're finding the local gpt project of interest and usefulness consider uh, going to github and give it a star that will be really helpful also if you want to support my work check out both my patreon and you can also buy me a coffee there are a lot of more exciting things coming to the local gpt project so if you want to stay up to date consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any updates thanks for watching and as always see you in the next one